always thought your name was Anti Snark on Twitter until I realized that your Twitter handle is your name. Uh, yeah. it took me a while to figure that out. This dog can be slow uh, on the uptake. Yeah. Ellen, uh, let's see as Nigel is typing some things in. Apparently, uh, I'm going to have to try to yep. talk our way through. Uh, no, not uh, hearing anything, I'm Nigel. Uh, <laughs> Let me just check my sound because I'm doing this crazy thing. So you should be coming from Soundflow 64 in. Yes. Hmm. Maybe it's my setup. Hang on. Most recently, he's been the instructional technology specialist at the University of Mary Washington. Check. It's and, actually um, my situation. Let's see. One of his most recent interests is new forms of web storytelling. So that sounds like it would be very interesting. He shares his ideas and discoveries at Cog Dog Blog and Cog Dog Dog IT. Say and that quickly. Uh, he, Alan, likes I got your audio. And, uh, storytelling, hiking. Coding and the who. <laughs> so Ellen okay. and um, Nigel are going to tell us about new educational approaches in the case of DS106. Thank you, Nigel. And thanks for that intro, but we're just. Um, we're good. We're good. It was my fault, Nigel. Uh, you can hear me now, Alan? Yes, I had the wrong setting in Google Hangouts. Ooh. <laughs> sorry, sorry to make you like futz around there with the dials, but that's all right. That's what it's all about. <laughs> it's building up the adrenaline and the excitement for this connection, of 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 which I am got a beautiful view of you, of course, and the. Um, You've got the me, here. and if I pick this uh, this camera up, and um, I can. Uh, Show you some of the room. Whoa! Hey, friends. <laughs> Good day. Hello from uh, Fairbanks, Alaska. Cool. Well, <clears throat> so we thought rather than than you know hitting you with a whole pile of slides and and uh, so it's like we just uh, I, I, you know Alan's been involved in DS one and six since the beginning. I've known about it since pretty much it started. So we thought we'd just really talk about it a bit more, and um, so my, you know, my recollection, Alan, is is probably getting on for three years ago. <laughs> um, getting on for about three years ago, there was a sort of series of tweets started to to hit, um, you know, the Twitterverse about um, this course starting, and. Um, and we soon found out that Jim Groom was involved in it. And you know, any time Jim sticks his finger in anything, the you know you get the sort of explosion of, of, of stuff happening. So, you know, there are a number of, of different histories of how DS one hundred six started. Um, what's what's your sort of take on on the beginnings of you know of of, of that course? Okay. Well, we're going to sit around the campfire for a couple hours here as we. Go through the, the, the tales. <laughs> no, no, just kidding. Uh, I, I've had an interest in, in various storytelling things, web storytelling, uh, for a while, and, and also of Jim and the, the team at uh, DTLT at University of Mary Washington for a while. So I was checking out in 2010 uh, when he took a what was a traditional uh, digital storytelling class, which is actually, uh, you should know, there is no such course as DS106 at the University of Mary Washington is actually CPSC 106 which is computer science and it's a it's an elective for um, for many uh, students who uh, take it to satisfy a creative elective so it's not a hardcore science course and someone had been teaching it as a traditional course uh, and then Jim got a chance to teach it and of course he did it differently and uh, in, in his uh, incarnation of the class uh, it switched from being more about creating media and digital videos and the personal narrative 
that's been very well popularized and done well by the Center for Digital Storytelling and turned it more into focused on the web as both a place for uh, publishing, sharing, uh, but also the web as sort of a, a character or um, uh, an actor in many of the kind of things that students create and web media uh, for some of us being almost maybe a different genre. So uh, in Jim's first uh, classes, uh, he had many of the elements that we have right now uh, influenced a lot by the ideas of um, a former colleague there, Gardner Campbell, of this idea of the importance of people uh, having what Gardner calls a personal cyber infrastructure. Uh, and that's manifested in the course by the students who are required to register uh, an internet domain, uh, set up hosting, and install uh, WordPress, and more or less do all their work in their own digital space, but using RSS syndication technology, so everything the students published was also connected and republished at the course blog. And so Jim was doing this for uh, two semesters, and uh, many of us were, were kind of following along and really interested to see what happens when um, students are not only creating a lot, but they're also narrating their work um, and doing it in the open space. And so uh, sometime in the fall of 2010, actually that's not, I should not say autumn because that's not fall for you, but let's say October <laughs> of 2010, uh, he was asked by someone, uh, have you ever thought about you know, opening up this course so other people could participate? And that generated the idea um, that manifested itself in uh, 2011 in January as uh, more or less the open course that we see now. And I uh, was someone that Jim contacted in his planning stages just to bounce off some ideas along with his colleague Martha Burtis who did a lot of the uh, construction of the first websites uh, for the class and uh, Tom Woodward, uh, who was involved. And we had one Skype call, and we outlined some ideas uh, for the course because we wanted to really take advantages of a lot of the affordances uh, on the web, again, of being a completely open course, making it so open participants um, could sign up, but pretty much they, their participation is somewhat of a different level than the enrolled students. Uh, but the main aspect, again, being this idea of ds106.us, being a place that aggregates all the work that people do. And we kind of formulated the early idea for uh, the assignment bank, which is an open repository of the kind of uh, tasks that we ask participants to do. And it's designed in a manner where people actually uh, contribute and create assignments for other people to do. Cool. And uh, so I, then I was one of the people who participated as an open participant in uh, 2011, and uh, I also uh, worked for six months at Mary Washington and taught it in person in 2012, and have taught it online several times since then, as well as um, got myself involved in working on the WordPress site. So I, I can't really seem to stop uh, wanting to be part of, of DS106, and that's that is one of the characteristics. Yeah, I think that was, that was something that was quite clear from a lot of the open participants, certainly, wasn't it? That they, they kept coming back for, for other iterations. And in terms of those, those early days, or, you know, I think one of the things I remember, and, and I find it quite interesting, was that, that not only was that running out of University of Mary Washington, but other people who participated in those you know, first couple of courses then actually took that idea and started to um, push that out of their institutions. Um, so Michael Branson Smith is uh, in, um, in um, New York, is it? Um, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, various other people, you know, had that same idea, not necessarily to do exactly the same course, but to you know to take that model. Maybe. Yeah, and the way the way we set it up is. Um, People don't have. To, there is actually no single DS106. There's the ones mm -hmm. that have been taught at, Mary, at University of Mary Washington, but you know uh, the course that Michael Branson Smith did at uh, York College uh, in New York City uh, was actually a different sort of course. It was actually like a digital video production class. Uh, mm -hmm. Scott Lockman from Japan uh, taught one that was actually in uh, in cyberspace history, but still he kind of meshed the the needs of his class. Um, with the, the constructs and resources that DS-106 had available with this idea that students maybe in different classes um, 
could have their work coming in and there was this capability for people to uh, somewhat collaborate or connect uh, across classes. So it's, it's a much more uh, porous uh, structure, if you will, uh, for the internet than the usual sort of boxes and silos that we build for classes. I think that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons I thought it would be interesting to talk about today because it isn't just about, you know, okay, if I'm doing digital storytelling then I could possibly use this. It's about, you know, I think the model that sits behind this. So, I mean, in terms of that, you know, it, do you want to describe, let's say, some of the I don't know, pedagogical approaches, some of those networking uh, approaches that, that exist within the course? Sure. I mean, I mean, again, a piece of it is is the um, the students not only publishing their work. And a lot of times in a media class, when you give students assignment, they'll create a video or sound file and they'll post it on their blog, and that's all there is. Well, that's not really good enough in our classes. So, uh, kind of a not quite a rubric, if you will. But uh, when I teach it, and, and I picked this up from from Scott Lockman and, and adopted it, uh, there's three things that I'm looking for in my students' work. Uh, one is that they uh, narrate and write about the ideas behind uh, the particular assignment. So why did they choose to use that movie clip? Or what is their relationship to it? It's nothing specific, but more or less it's like when you watch a DVD movie and then you watch the extras and you learn all about you know, where the script came from and the screenplay. It's the making of. And, and that's really important for students to sort of share their thought process as they develop it. And then, of course, the media that they produce and it's got to be embedded into their blog, so it's you know within the context of their writing. And then we also want to see them write about and reflect on the process. How do they build it? What techniques do they use? What software do they use? If they used external media, we want them to be um, attributing uh, the sources of their various media files. So that's part of the thing that we uh, put out there in terms of the way we ask students to publish their work. Uh, we've got the Open Assignment Bank, which is, again, a way uh, for rather than us prescribing all the things we want students to do, uh, they have some options to pick the things that they want to do when we get to the audio unit. They get to say, um, wow, I want to try this assignment, or this one sounds interesting. Or if they don't like any of the assignments, uh, and it's a requirement for our students, they actually create more assignments for other people to do, and we've got about uh, well over 500 uh, assignments that we've accumulated in there. Uh, we also have uh, an activity we call the Daily Create. Um, which is born out of the idea inspired by a photography site called The Daily Shoot, which every day we publish a new creative challenge with the idea that it's, it's healthy in our minds uh, to be doing regular acts of creativity. So they're designed to be small things that won't take a lot of time, but they may you know, nudge you or push you to maybe try uh, being creative in ways you don't normally do. So for me, I always, it's kind of comes out of seeing people always express the, oh, I can't do that, that kind of I can't language. So me, I always say I can't draw because I still say I can't draw. My, my drawings you know, look like jagged stick figures. Um, but by practicing some of these things, um, you, you, you get some small scale you know, leveling up in your ability uh, to draw. So I feel like I can do some, some drawing now. So they, they force, or not maybe force you, but sort of invite you to maybe stretch some of your creative skills. And we don't grade people. So when I run a class, uh, more or less, the, the thing is they have to do maybe three or four daily creates a week. They have to write about it and share what they did. But I don't really assess them on necessarily an artistic quality of what they did. Um, I'm really looking to see how they interpreted uh, the challenge. So the key to the daily create is looking at it and say, well, I could do that very literally. Um, I'm trying to remember what, what today's was, was a writing one, I think. Uh, but you can also interpret it any way you want because we're not really grading you on how you do it. Uh, we're grading you on the fact that you did it and you're able to, to write about it. Is it I, think, I think there's two, there's probably a couple of things there that, that certainly we've talked about in the past. Is that idea that they, it's a really highly active course. So your students don't get to sit like you folks are getting to sit here and, and listen to Alan. <laughs> Uh, talk, they, you know, they, they're forced into activity, uh, you know, <laughs> pedagogically, you know, we, we, we know that actually making students work um, is something which, which helps their learning, that if you are, um, sit passively at the side and you don't do very much, then um, it just, you know, it, it's able to just pass by you. Um, and I think, I think the other thing you would describe 
<laughs> the other thing you were describing there, Alan, is that idea of, of metacognition. It's not just um, what it is that you do, it's the thinking about what it is that you've done and why you've done it and describing that and, and also describing that for other people. Um, so in terms of the, the assignment bank, it isn't just, hey, I've come up with an idea, it's here's my idea and this is this is what you need to do to be able to create that, or this is what I did to create this um, particular instance of it. Would that yeah, be and a, they, a fair... Yeah, they, they, they learn that they don't really have to do everything in a really prescribed manner. It's not like they're solving... Mm -hmm they're looking to see you know their solution to an algebraic equation so uh, th there's a lot of freedom for them to sort of pick uh, a style or approach uh, the idea of writing as finding your voice so I I've had students who uh, basically create characters to be the, the writers of their blog um, some of their students I had a math student so most of her um, creativity um, had sort of a mix of her interest in math and, and Disney uh, cartoons and, and films so students really get to sort of follow along with their, their interest and sort of pick a personality in a way to represent, represent themselves online. And again, in our class, um, the whole idea is that they get to sort of craft this representation of themselves and explore uh, some issues of identity. And since it's their domain and their work, um, they can shut it down if they want when they're done. They can get rid of it or they can take it with them. Yeah. So in terms of, of that... Um Domain stuff. So I, um, you know, we've got, you know, I think there's a, there's a lot of really interesting things in this in this course and, and aspects which don't really exist in lots of other courses. So you you, you know what you're saying there is that students can create their work and then they can they can decide whether they take it with them. Do you just want you know? They create their work. They they actually you, you talked about the stuff that um, Campbell Gardner was was thinking about in the very early days. You know. That they create their work in a space which belongs to them, and um, I know we've had you know some presentations on e-portfolios earlier today. But this is this is slightly different. This is this is very much owned by the students. Do you want to just to, you know tell us a little bit about that that idea there of owning your Abs own Absolutely, website? yeah, and and it 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 kind of turns you know what we normally talk about in e-portfolios inside out, although. Uh, ideally, it pursues this, the same means to an end. It's, it's a way to demonstrate the work you've done and, and your skills uh, in a way that's accessible to, to other people. Um, but it's not structured, so it's, it's not anything that's um, systematized. So the way you get to present yourself is completely up to you. So you end up imploring um, some of your design skills, uh, your writing, uh, and uh, you know, and perhaps you know, students are getting to think about. Um, what it means for their work to be uh, out in the public because that's the added bonus we have by having these open participants um, because they end up uh, giving feedback, they answer questions, they give criticism. Uh, sometimes we've had open participants mixing with their registered students on group projects. Uh, so again, it, it makes the boundary of where the class ends and this larger uh, DS106 community uh, begin uh, much more, more blurry and at the same time, when the class ends, DS-106 doesn't shut down. I mean, there's always something going on within this community, uh, somewhat strung together because of a lot of, we have a lot of activity in Twitter as the glue. We've got the DS-106 radio, which we haven't even talked about it, which I know is, is your passion, which we're broadcasting on right now. Uh, so there are these different ways that people can choose to participate. So they can try to do, they could follow along with the course stuff that's going on, they can dive in and do daily creates, they can do assignments, they can do radio, and, and sometimes there's a lot of, we call, you know, people do drive-bys, they come by and they pick one assignment, and, and they, they employ it, and, and we're all for uh, drive-by visitors. We hope they wave as they go by. <laughs> so, Christina, did you have a question? I might have to come closer. Just hang on a minute, Alan. Yeah, bring her up there. Put her on camera. <laughs> I, I saw one flash okay. by Twitter, but... Yeah, so she, 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 poor Christine has lost her voice entirely. Uh, so she oh, said, no. She, yeah, she's thrown it so you'll have, to, you'll have to read it from there. But we, I mean, we, we've maybe got a couple of minutes at the end uh, in terms of questions anyway, but, you know, you mentioned, you mentioned the radio, and it is something which is... Uh, 
which developed, you know, it, it's, it's part of the course. It's like, hey, digital storytelling, well, how, what are the media for, you know, telling stories? And radio is one of them. And this online, internet-based radio station developed, which is is really become, you know, although it's, it's still associated with DS106, it really has developed a life of its own. And, and um, you know, I think that for, for, you know, the community which exists around about that, it's become quite important. And, you know, so there are people broadcasting on this radio station, anything, you know, from music to um, sessions like this to um, sort of round the dinner table chats to, you know, walking down the street to um, confessionals to, to whatever. Um, I think, you know, in terms of the radio, we, we, we were sort of reminiscing about some of this the other day and while we prepped for this. And, Scott Lockman, who is, Alan said was in, in um, working in Japan, he was broadcasting. He started broadcasting his morning trips to work, and he was doing that when the big earthquake ha happened uh, over there. So that was broadcast live on the radio. Um, you know, there have been occasions when you know people have had um, you know family family deaths. Um, you know in you know, related to uh, to people, and you know, there's been a whole what we call gathering around the campfire of of people pulling that sort of community together um, to to provide support. So you know, the the, the radio is something which um, you know, will what I'll do maybe after this is I'll I'll, I'll share a dot ground with some some links in it so folks can get to that. In terms of the, I mean, in terms of the course, um, you, you go to ds106.us um, um, for for the course. You, for the radio, you go to ds106rad.io/listen, and that will let you get into to listen to it. But there were some, I think there were some other things which came out of, of, of that as well. And I'm, I'm conscious of the the time, so there were things like uh, reclaim hosting and um, the um, domain of one's own. Um, that sort of side of stuff, the WordPress aggregation that, that, that you and Marv have been doing, and um, and then also you you know the the, the course um, was um, a winner. I'm not quite sure whether winner is the, the right word, but in the um, in the reclaim open learning um, um, some you know sort of um, contest. I'm not quite sure whether it was really a contest, but you know, it was it was recognised there with about five other um, sort of international projects. Is something which was working to um, you know develop open learning, and I think I think for me maybe you know the thing I might like to just finish up or get you to to talk about is is the importance of openness um, for educators and um, you know today and going forward. What what's your take on on that, Alan? It's the only thing that matters. No. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's you know as as uh, Christina's tweeting, and, and I'll try to get back to her first question too. I, I mean, it, it's really critical because I mean we're like open in in the widest open possible sense. So we're on open source tools. Uh, the openness of like that there's really no beginning or end of the course, and people can jump in and jump out. Um, as open access. Um, all those things, you know, I'm not going to get into all the definitions uh, of open, but uh, more so, and, and kind of maybe um, Christina asked the difference between um, DS106 and the X. Um, I took a vow not to say this word, so I'm just going to say the M <laughs> word, but it's a four-letter acronym, and, and I slipped a couple times today in my, my talk at, at Alaska here. So, um, but, but a real piece of it is, is a, a characteristic that um, we've not, like, we didn't really sit down with a plan, but the way we design DS106 and think about the ways that we build this uh, network of loose collaborations and distributed uh, points of, of content creation is the way the internet you know works. It's a distributed network. It's not like pushed out centrally, although we do have a central site. Uh, DS106 is very much a distributed thing. And when people come up with new ideas, we didn't plan for a radio station. It happens. So a lot happens emergently in what um, you know Jim uh, likes to call a, a pedagogy of uncertainty which means that we are like poised and ready for the unexpected and 
and then we sort of progress from there. So we've had everything from our student sites being hacked. Uh, so instead of just uh, shutting things down, uh, we sort of enrolled this uh, Omre 5807 character as a character for our storytelling assignments, and students got to learn a little bit about um, even what it means to have your website hacked and then how to come back from that. Uh, so part of that is, is in the openness, too, of be, like being open, uh, not having like a complete rigid structure that your course is going to follow, that you're prepared uh, to sort of let it evolve in, in unexpected directions. And that's happened as students sort of come up with ideas that build off of each other's ideas, what we call riffing. Uh, the fact that we've got some open participants who create characters like a talking doll from a Twilight Zone episode. I don't have time to talk about Talkie Tina. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and you can look at that and say, well, that's kind of wild and crazy, but I can't really do that in my history course. Uh, so it's not a lock and stock model that you pick up and plunk in something else. So there are elements of DS-106 that could have applications in, in many places. You're probably getting the, the, the yank sign, so just, yeah. just cut it off at any time. Um, but but there, there are elements of DS-106 that I think could be used in any course context, not wholesale, but bits and pieces, whether it's the, the idea of an assignment bank, students publishing in digital spaces, uh, a, a daily challenge, uh, even using something like you know, synchronous uh, radio technology. So uh, d don't look for uh, single point solutions. Look for things that you can uh, adapt and integrate in, into your course structures right now. Yeah. No, I think that's. Um, I, I I think you're right. There's some sort of awesome possibilities there, and yeah, it's, it is a case of you know what what's there for you. So we're sort of. Uh, Colin's reminding me we're running out of time, so probably need to see what questions folks have, have got. You have to get them to say DS106 Radio for Life, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> After three. <laughs> DS six radio by light. Hey, I oh, love the yeah. Kiwis. You guys always come through. <laughs> you actually knew about DS one hundred six before coming to this session. One, two, three. And at least another person who didn't put their hand up. <laughs> I know Stephen Harlow's out there. So yeah. yeah, he's a quiet one. He's, got a, he's a quiet one, but. <laughs> so, I, I, I expect to see all of you do the daily create tomorrow. I'm, I'm checking on you. So look, look at, at tdc.ds106.us tomorrow and take on a creative challenge. Can you dig it? Anybody, anybody think you've done? Um, I find these kind of ideas really innovative and inspiring, but what I've run up against is how. How do you bring some of this into the world we spend most of our time in with our moderation and accreditation and bureaucracy and so, so, standards? And so I, I don't know if you, did you hear that, Alan? I, I, I think it was, uh, this, this looks all great, but how do you bring it into the world of accreditation and standards? Yeah. Um, and, so, and, and a normal course, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, we do it already. So when, when we're teaching a class at University of Mary Washington, We've got a fixed number of students. They're getting graded. There, there are your standard course uh, requirements for honor code and, um, and, and turning their work in on time. Uh, they actually, when I'm taught it, they, they turn in their uh, work to me through a Canvas LMS, and, and we do grades. So uh, it's all part of a regular course. Uh, we're just making that experience open enough for people who are outside to be able to participate in a real way, not just in the cheap viewing seats or, or being able to watch a bunch of video lectures. So, um, you know, and, and even if you don't want to do the openness thing, uh, maybe it's the idea of having, like, a, a way for students to uh, create the assignments, you know, so it can just be a, a piece of, a, of the pedagogy or just looking at the ways that you can use media um, to, to be part uh, of the assignments that you give students to do. They don't always have to do um, stiff PowerPoints or um, written work. Uh, have them represent their work in other kinds of media. How's that? Right. Yeah, no, that's great. We, we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, so 
Christina can come in and whisper to us all. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's up next, and um, yeah, she's really struggling with her voice. But thanks, Alan, for joining us from from Alaska. We'll let you go and enjoy the um, northern evening. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see. Thank you. I think yeah. I think what I what I got out there was is, is on, on the one hand is the kind of the constraints of technology and the rules that we have to live by, but we maybe need to give ourselves permission to be a bit creative in small ways on a regular basis. Give ourselves lots of permission. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm going to do tonight. I, we live in a permissive society, isn't that right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and where's Richard? Is he not in the room? He's he's. Uh, he's, he's where well, is he? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, he's there he is. <laughs> good, good, to, good to see you, friend. They obviously pay you too much. Yeah, this, this, that, that right amount. But I owe Richard a lot for bringing me to New Zealand in 2000. That was a, a, a fantastic yeah. experience. He's been good to me. There, Alan. You've got uh, Mark North over sitting in the front here. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mark. I couldn't see you with the good camera. Good to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like being Thanks. among old friends, or not old friends, familiar friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good right. to see you. See ya. Thank you, Good to see you. Thanks, Nigel. Yeah. Cheers. Good luck, Christina. You'll do great. <laughs>